Still out, mate. Today, we're making this thing. All right, then. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Squirrel's Woodshop. This is Danny. And a little confession. I'm not Australian. But I do like kangaroos. So I, maybe that does make me Australian. Anyways, we're starting this project off with some bass wood that's already been milled down to about inch and a half thick. We're gonna make it seven and a half long and four and a half wide. Now these are rough measurements because we're gonna do a lot of sanding to get them down to where they fit inside each other and link together. But we'll worry about that later. After we get the outside cut, we're just going to come back and hollow out the inside. Now the inside measurements need to be a little bit bigger than they are wide because they're going to be sliding inside. So that four and a half, you can make it four and a half, but make it, you know, every bit of four and a half. Here we're Wow, look at that bit. That's a big bit, and it's spinning real fast. So I had to slow it down, stop it, double check everything, make sure everything was gonna be all right before I just stuck my hands real close to it, you know. So after I convinced myself everything was gonna be all right, went ahead and routed out the inside of it. Now this bit is big, but it's not quite big enough. If it uh, was a little bit bigger, we were going to be able to do a little bit less sanding, but this is the biggest size we had. Now, whenever you're routing these, you want to make sure that whenever you flip it over, your bearing is still on a flat surface. If it's not on a flat surface, it will not be proportional to the other side, and we really need it proportional to the other side. So once we got the inside done, we flipped them over and done the outside. And that's whenever the sanding starts. Here we're just uh, basically connecting the two router ends together where we the router bit stopped. We're making them smooth all the way around now. And then it was time for the inside. I tried it with some sandpaper and thought, hey, let's try this little gadget, see what it does. So we brought it out and gave it a whirl. Now you can't tell from here because somebody put the big old arm in the way, but it does every bit but get in the very center part of it. It wasn't quite big enough to reach the middle. And so it was back to good old sandpaper. Bring out a jar of that good old elbow grease. And before you know it, well, we were sanding the next one. And then we had another one to do. Well, it was a lot of sanding. But luckily, this is also going to get out any of the burn marks that we might have put in it from that big old router bit we were using. Now, once we got everything sanded the way we wanted it, it was time to figure out how these things were going to go together. Now, I got two of them, but the third one's going to be a little bit more difficult. So, we brought out the good old scroll saw. And don't forget the stool to set on. That's almost as equally as important. Now, we're gonna split this thing right down the middle. Now, I've seen it where they've cut one side and then come back and split the other one by pulling them apart. I wasn't about all that. I done put too much elbow grease into this thing to be pulling it apart and hoping that it breaks where I want it to. So we just went ahead and went right through both sides. And with our freshly cut two halves, we tried to put them back together. And by try, I mean, it didn't work the first time. So we started sanding on the belly of these and we wasn't too worried about the outside. It seemed like it was fine but the inside needed to be able to rotate in between the other two once we got it in place. Stuck one side in, put the other one in, and they just was not wanting to go together. So I wrestled with it for a little bit longer, and finally, after I turned off the camera, 
it all fell in place. It's amazing how that works. But anyways, this is what we're stuck with, and we're not taking them back apart. That's for sure. Because I don't know why I'll be able to get it back together. So we'll just leave it there. Get ready for the glue up. Got old squirrel there to help me with this glue up so we can spread them apart. And I just got a real thin piece of wood right here and I'm gonna slather on some wood glue on both sides. And then kind of wedge it in there and hope to get most of the glue in between the two halves. With all the glue in there, now it's time to put a few clamps on it. Now I wanted to wipe out all the excess glue that way it doesn't go to staining on the wood because it's a really light wood. And anytime you go to glue on light wood, sometimes it leaves a little bit of a, a stain on it. So I didn't want that. So I went ahead and wiped it all off, anything that you could see. Left in the clamps for a day or so. Took them apart and it don't look too bad, does it? But before we can call it done, we need to put a finishing on it. Now this is just a polyacrylic that we got. It's a, a flat, so it's not gonna have any kind of sheen to it. But it does help a little bit. And my wife claims that it's also good for whenever she goes to dust. That dust just flies right off there. Or at least in my mind, that's what it does. Now we're gonna hook the spray gun up to the air compressor. Try to give this thing a nice even coat all the way around it while also getting inside the inner parts of it, kind of difficult, but you can get it. We want to make it look like a glazed donut. Look at that. It shines now, but whenever it dries, it'll be flat. If you've made it this far, we really appreciate you watching. And if you like this kind of content, go ahead and like and subscribe because there's going to be plenty more. Anyways, thanks for watching and God bless you.